leading member of the Democracy Hub, Oliver Barker Vomao, together with 12 other protesters who took part in the demonstration against illegal mining from the 21st to the 23rd of September, have been remanded into police custody for two weeks. The three-day stop Galam Galamse must stop now demo was riddled with chaos and drama leading to several arrests which has since generated a public uproar. Lord Edouard sat through proceedings in court and reports. After missing his first arraignment on day one due to health reasons, Oliver Bakavomawo was escorted to the circuit court limping and frail. Fanny Otu was, however, unable to make it to the court. Oliver's lawyer, Dr. Justice Remsai, argued in court that the police had neglected his clients and denied him prompt medical care until he collapsed while in custody. The state proffered eight counts of offences, including offensive conduct to the breach of peace and stealing to which he pleaded not guilty. Another protester, Felicity Nelson, had a fatal scare after experiencing an asthmatic attack on Wednesday evening while another slept on his knees for two days due to no space. In his bill application, Dr. Justice Remsai noted that the police's inability to provide adequate care and shelter should be considered in granting all the protesters' bill. The lawyers also indicated that the protesters were not being fed, but the prosecution led by Nana Kusakusi opposed the bill application vehemently. She noted that the accused persons were fed with nutritious food from a reputable restaurant. Responding to access to adequate health care and space, the prosecution prayed for prison custody for the protesters so they could be appropriately catered for. She again indicated that some of the protesters refused to give their actual names, making it difficult for proper identification and fixed place of abode to be located. After considering the argument, presiding judge Kwabna Obri Abua reminded the protesters to police custody for two weeks and ordered the police to ensure they are adequately fed. Perry legal practitioner Martin Pebu expressed disappointment in the court's decision. I'm extremely shocked that the Leonard Child Judge remanded them. I'm shocked. There's a case that doesn't require a remand. The police didn't make a good case for a remand. I see, you read Oku versus the Republic, the case of Tila J, you read the decision of Oku versus the Republic, they say, yes, the law is alive. In this particular case, what are witnessing for? I don't think a good case was made for a remand. As the judge himself uh, accepted, quite a number of the offenses are misdemeanors. Lawyer Elam Abebio, also known as Ama Governor, who was remanded on Wednesday, was mistakenly added to the protesters who were brought to court and was later escorted back to custody. This brings to 52, the total number of protesters who have been remanded into custody. They are to reappear in court on October 8. Lord Edwasari, TV3 News, Accra. Free the citizens! And on social media for the last few days, it's been heavily trending, free the citizens, and many are sharing different perspectives and opinions on this. Let's get that of former Deputy Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Dominic Ayena, who's joined us via Zoom. Uh, Mr. Ayana, very good evening to you. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for having me. What would your immediate thoughts be on how the police have acted um, in the last few days? Are they within their, the confines of the law or they are trampling on the rights of these uh, protesters? Well, I think uh, uh, no one has put this, you know, in a, a better perspective than His Excellency... John Ramani Mahama. He has called what has happened high-handed, you know, an, an abuse of uh, fundamental rights of uh, the protesters. And I think that that is, that is what sums up the treatment that has been meted out to ordinary citizens who were freely exercising their right under Article 21 of the Constitution. Um, the, the treatment meted out to them by the police, you know, is high-handed in the sense that, you know, merely demonstrating to express dissatisfaction with the state of affairs in the country um, does not, you know, I mean, um, um, merit being detained for, let's say, two weeks, okay? Uh, what investigations are the police going to do for two weeks requiring that they should stay in police custody, have their liberty, their liberty, you know, I mean, uh, curtailed for two weeks pending investigations by the police? And as uh, Martin Pebu, you know, rightly pointed out in the, the, this, in the clip that you played, all right, the law is very clear that bail should not be used as punishment, okay? You can, you only, um, you know, um, 
refuse bail, to grant bail, um, where the, circum the circumstances are said that the person to be detained, the detainee, you know, or the accused person is a flight risk. From all the indications, um, from all the evidence, you know, that, I mean, I've been following the, the developments very keenly. Mm. From all indications, okay, their lawyers, you know, said that they had, uh, you know, I mean, fixed place of abode. There were some of them, or most of them were gainfully employed. They even came with persons who were ready to stand surety mm. for them. And then yet, you know, the police and the attorney general insisted that they should go, you know, I mean, back into detention for, for, for 14 days, you know, pending investigation. What, I mean, the, you see, I think that the problem we have had in this country is that we started with, I mean, adherence to Article 21 of the Constitution, mm. with paradoxically the MPP leading the way, all right, in MPP and IGP. That is the case of, uh, you know, I mean, uh, that was reported in the Supreme Court um, law reports, 1993-94, two Ghana law reports. Right. All right. This was a landmark case in which, you know, the lawyers uh, representing the MPP made the case that the then, you know, public uh, order, I mean, a decree, which required that you obtain a police permit before you embark on a demonstration was a violation of the Constitution. And because it was a violation of the Constitution, it was, you know, null and void and uh, of no effect. Okay. The Supreme Court you know, upheld the, right. the claim of the NPP in Mr. that case. Mr. Ina, sorry for butting in, okay. but so as, as it stands, is there any way forward for the, um, the protesters who are currently still within the grips of the police? Because, like you are indicating, a number of them have been arrested and per the charges leveled against them, they should be at least granted bail. Now that that has not happened, yeah. do they still have I mean, any this, way so, around it? Let me say the law has changed radically to the, the extent that, I mean, there is no, apart from treason, if you commit treason, right, that is the only way, I mean, the only offense in respect of which bail may be, I mean, uh, prima facie refused. But where you are dealing with even, the, I mean, a, a first degree felony, second degree felony, it depends on the discretion of the, I mean, uh, the court, okay? Now, if you are asking about the way forward, the problem is that the court has remanded them for two weeks. What their lawyers have, the only window open to their lawyers is to appeal that decision, all right? And if, if the appeal is rapidly, you know, I mean, uh, filed before, let's say, the high court, and the high court can, because of the urgency of the matter, mm. determine the appeal within a few days, then they can gain their liberty. Otherwise, they have to be there until they are brought to court the next, at the next, I mean, uh, I mean hearing day. But and what I do you say about the judge good. and the handling of this case? The judge, do you feel there is some manipulation, you think? Because first, so we are talking about the say, police handling. It, but you know, the some, judge sometimes, is also... uh, when you journalists are asking questions, certain, certain questions, you know, for, for a lawyer can, can constitute a trap. For instance, if you say, <laughs> is there any manipulation? Certainly, you know, from afar, I cannot see, I cannot determine if there is any evidence of manipulation. The judge could have aired right, in the application of the law. And I think the judge erred because the evidence was, you know, patently clear that they should be granted bail because, first of all, these are, mis misdemean these are misdemeanors. Secondly, they have, I mean, a fixed place of abode, as, I mean, uh, their lawyers stated, they are gainfully employed. They are ordinary citizens of this country. Where are they going to run to? In those circumstances, no judge should even, I mean, attempt to curtail the liberty of a citizen for one hour. You know, so I disagree with the judge, you know, but as to whether the judge is being manipulated, that I cannot, I mean, uh, I mean, I don't have an opinion to express on that one. Doc, pleasure talking to you. Thank you for your thoughts this evening on this my, uh, very... My, ple my pleasure, my for, pleasure. For this very national subject that many of you are still talking about, but we'll definitely be bringing you more as it unfolds in the coming days.